সফল শ্রীমন্তী অধ্যাবসায়ের কাছে ধরা দিল সাফল্য জয়েন্ট এন্ট্রান্স মেইন এক্সামিনেশনে পশ্চিমবঙ্গে প্রথম ঢাকুরিয়ার শ্রীমন্তী দে পেট sorry not sorry in kolkata to cracking je and landing it delicious trust me it's a story with more plot twists than a bengali soap opera okay let's rewind to the very beginning picture this kolkata the city of joy i was born and raised in this beautiful chaos and yes i am bengali so sometimes if you hear a little bit of bengali accent in any of my videos you will know why okay so let's start at the very beginning I started my academic journey at South Point School. So if you're from Kolkata, you know South Point is basically Hogwarts. But instead of wands, we had pens. And instead of magic, we had, well, a lot of homework. Well, every school is like that. But our school had one thing that was a very special thing was like the 4th of July. So 4th July was the day when you would be getting the prizes to all the top 10, to whatever the people who had gotten scholarships, all-rounder scholarships. There were sports scholarships, there were sports awards, medals, so many things. I, I was that kid, you know, the one who always sat in the first row at a color-coded timetable and actually enjoyed doing homework. I know, of course, you don't need to agree with me. I don't know whether that was good or not, but that was me. From class 3 to class 10, I was the class topper. Every single year, yeah, every single year, except for class six. Every single year, except for class six. I know, I know the tragedy, the horror, the scandal. But honestly, it was just the jump from junior to high school. And I was basically still figuring out how to use, you know, how to become more, adjust myself to basically a new environment. That was the main thing why I became second place. Oh my God, look at me. I'm still trying to explain why. I came second in class six, but whatever, it was like, like, you know, it was like a healthy competition. And I honestly did not even think of anything else. I was not into sports. I, I was just a bookish person. In other words, a complete nerd. So now let's talk about my arc and nemesis. Well, not really a nemesis, more like my academic rival. So every year it was me versus this one guy. I was first, he was second. We were having, you know, healthy competition. And every time when the final results used to come out, we were in the same, you know, class. So basically as the final results used to come out and we were just comparing masks, marks and, you know, all freaking out who, who would be the first this time. But, you know, here's the thing. I loved being a nerd. I still do. Books were my best friends. While, you know, other kids were out playing other games, I I love being at home. You know, nose buried in a novel, living out my best bookish life. My favorite books at that time were Enid Blyton. I still remember. Like, you know, those books, book descriptions of lush green meadows, tall trees, and fairy lands. There was this land of something new land that used to come up at the top of a faraway tree, magic faraway tree. I mean, those were my childhood. I I used to be in a complete, you know, complete dream world where I used to just stay there. That was like every, I mean, I grew up reading and it lighted and I grew up with, there was this moon pie. There were all the different characters. There were, there were famous five. There was um, secret seven. All these, like these books, I, I mostly read just and it liked, and I still remember everything clearly. And, you know, it was, it was like, it was like my childhood. And I, I used to love reading books. I used to love, like, that is the main reason, I think, why I actually was able to become first, because I liked actually reading books of every kind, not just story books, academic books, reference books, everything. You know, I would like to show you something. And 
I I used to love reading books. I used to love like that is the main reason I think why I actually was able to become first because I liked actually reading books of every kind, not just story books, academic books, reference books, everything. You know, I would like to show you something. And you know, these are all my medals. I mean, these look so many, but. Uh, these are all like these are all I mean most of them have lost their shine though I agree yeah but these are all like the MP Villa award you can see <laughs> I still have all of them with me this is the one that still has the shine I think this one MP Villa award 2012 and this one also class 3 my name was imprinted on it and I came first in class three. <laughs> 2015 one. This one is class five. And yeah, these are all my awards that I got. And you know, when I was in school, I mean, well, I'm not lying, obviously. And these are all my Olympiad awards. These were all, you know, this one I think is uh, some school education Olympiad. I don't remember what it was. This one was a science Olympiad. Simple ones, I think. We used to have that. This one was IMO or International Mathematics Olympiad, the SOF one basically. And yeah, these were all like simple, simple Olympiad uh, medals that I used to collect. And, you know, you could call me a medal collector. But well, these are all legit. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's, it's like sort of with you, I'm going on this nostalgic journey of my life. And well, it's great. Okay, so let's now talk about the next thing. So naturally, next part of my journey. So I mean, since I was so bookish, and as you know, medical has a lot of the huge, huge books to read and know the big, big names of these medicines and all. So naturally, like everyone thought that I was going to be a doctor. I mean, you know, Bengali parents, right? I even read a bit of romance biology in class 10. And then, but one day I had an epiphany. I mean, I know you would think this is insane. This is crazy, but it is true. I realized that I cannot, under any circumstances, deal with blood, sputum, or anything remotely. So I bailed. Sorry. <laughs> but here's where things get wild. I had no idea what JEE was until class 11. I thought it was some, you know, some exam or some simple kind of things. But then suddenly, I was thrown into the deep end. The new school... I changed to new classmates and everyone talking about JEE like it was the Olympics of academics. I do think it's still there. Like it's the fourth toughest exam all over the world. But I did not know that. And I had only two years. Two years along with my class 12 boards, school studies and so on. It, it was insane. I still remember the day when I got to know what it was and where I had stepped foot into. And I, I actually killed, I mean, closed all the doors behind me. Why, you know, I did not take up biology in class 11 and 12. So there was no, no way I could have gone into, I could have given meat. I could have never have become a doctor. The day I realized that I could not become a doctor, I closed all my doors. So, you you know, the time when in Friends, a scene where Chandler was telling Rachel that you need to leave or quit your earlier job if you really want the push for your new job. So that, I think, played a major role because I knew I had no way out. And man, was I struggling. I was so much struggling. There were maths, there was physics, there was chemistry and everything felt like it was written in Hebrew. I, I had no idea. I, I mean, I don't know if you believe me or not. And But I, I actually lost my sleep. I lost a bunch of weight. I at least lost 20 to 30 kgs. I don't know what. And if you see, I'll show you some pictures of me of that time. And I literally looked like I was a dead person. 
I was just a skeleton. And and to add salt to my wound, I found out that all my not so top of friends were secretly JE ninjas. They were like, you know, quiet, mysterious, and, and they were suddenly like scoring these high, high marks in all the maths tuition exams in, you know, all these big, big institutions, Vichy, Akash, the test series that we give generally, mock tests, they were just scoring high marks and I was nowhere. I was flabbergasted. I was bamboozled. It was like falling from a little pond into the Pacific Ocean. JEE was endless. There was, there was nothing in sight. But here's the thing about me. I don't know how to give up. I mean, I can say that it's true. It's ingrained in my blood, you know. My parents believed in me. My teachers believed in me. Even when I didn't believe in myself. I pulled all-nighters like it was my new hobby. You know you're a true JE aspirant when you see the sunrise more often than your own reflection. That is true. I, 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 don't, I don't know what I would have done. Like I used to be... I used to just stay buried in books. I didn't know when I showered. I didn't know when I ate. I didn't even look at myself. I didn't even go out. I don't know what I did, but I just knew I had to fight and I had to win. And then there was the lowest point of my life. I wouldn't say lowest point. You know, I'll tell you there was even lower point later on in my life, but that time, the lowest point so far in my life was when I got a zero in a chemistry test in a tuition. You heard, yes, you heard that right. I mean, for you, for not even you, like any person, it might seem like it's fine. You can't get like that. But no, I mean, I used to get highest marks in every freaking exam. But that was the first time I had gotten a zero. I mean, I was too surprised to even cry. But then my chemistry sir told me something that I'll never forget. He said that good students, I still remember the exact words. Good students might have setbacks, but they are good through and through. It's, it's only a matter of time before you bounce back. So I fought. I studied. I cried a little sometimes, well, but I never gave up. And guess what? All that hard work paid off. I became the state topper in JE mains 2020. AIR 131 in JE mains, state rank 3 in WBJE, which is our state board engineering exam, and then the final boss, JE Advance. I got AIR 484 and landed in IIT Delhi CS. I, I cannot even describe the happiness I felt at that time. Obviously, now life is more difficult. I have become an adult. I mean, adulthood is always more tough. But that was the peak of my childhood. I mean, every sacrifice, every 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 time when I knew that my friends were playing, my friends were, you know, enjoying going to movies, going, going in different places with their, you know, as a couple, with their friends, hanging out, going to movies, bunking class. I, I studied and I always felt that, am I missing out? But still I knew that, all this would have its own time. I would be able to do everything I want once I'm able to get into an, an amazing college and I have my future secured. It, it was like winning the lottery. But instead of money, you get, you know, a sort of reputation, a college that will stay with you throughout your life. I know that obviously like skills matter more. Definitely, I also believe that. And of course, knowing you know me now, so obviously I did not stop studying when I went to IIT or I didn't stop honing my skills or whatever. But, you know, I think that this made me a different person altogether. Like I changed. I, I realized that, I realized that like, you know, I could achieve something and I did it. And that's when I realized that, you know, always dreams, dreams can be like very, very like unreasonable. It can be like impossible. But, you know, if you really believe in yourself and you really think and you're ready to go, you're ready to go the extra mile to achieve what you want in your life, then, you know, you can do it. I mean, there is literally nothing stopping you. You have to have a plan. You have to work smart. You have to have the belief. 
and you have to you know continuously think in your mind that i want this and i will get this then you will get it so what 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 actually did i learn from all this two things one the night is always darkest before the dawn i i still remember i still remember the day just before the jay advance and you know the time just before the day advance we were all giving so many mock tests every i was giving a mock test like every day i was giving 6 hours mock test and then absolving next 6 hours it was it was a crazy time but uh, and i i i used to just start crying all of a sudden like in the middle of the day when giving an exam or when just you know checking the results and talking to someone i i mean i was like on the edge of my nerves i was i was going crazy i i i don't recommend it obviously but but you know i would say that if you don't go the extra mile if you don't do what you want to do then you will always stay behind you have to you have to give in your everything and it was the darkest period of my life just before i got into iit delhi which was the peak there's always a valley i would always say that if you see if you feel that you are improving and then suddenly you feel that you are putting in more effort but the results are coming out less believe me that is the valley before the ultimate peak and second thing i believe there there are two mottos in my life the night is darkest before the dawn and the second motto is that aim for the stars even if you land on the moon then that's pretty awesome so i actually aimed for 1 to 100 AIR like all India rank in J advance. I mean that was the ultimate aim. I did not aim for anything in J mains, but you know as I said, like since I aimed for one to hundred in J advance, even 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 if I had not prepared anything in class nine and ten, I landed within five hundred. I got AIR four eighty four. So I think that and and I got became state topper in J mains. So I feel that even if I did not get AIR one to hundred, still. still i landed among the landed on the moon and also like there was another major thing that was happening during that time now that i like i, I actually like i actually like get uh, emotional when i think of that time so this was happening during covid i mean we were we were facing like the worst troubles of all time je was like a beast and on top of that there was covid so i could not meet my teachers i could not like discuss with my friends but i knew i i had to i kept fighting and if i can do it you can too i am telling you that now obviously as i went into iit delhi you would think that oh my god another iit it's not that iit delhi was no piece of cake let me tell you that people think that oh i am in iit i don't need to study no getting a 10 out of 10 in every course it was a nightmare some courses were so tough i am convinced that they were designed by evil geniuses <laughs> but you know me competition is in my blood seriously and if i don't get the highest marks i get this weird you know ick in my brain that i must beat my own score but hey i'm not saying that you need to go crazy over grades okay <laughs> but just a little healthy competition never hurt anyone right so you know that's my overall story from kolkata to iit delhi from teacher's pet to je survivor from zero in chemistry like take that to state topper if you take away anything from this video let it be this fight hard aim high and never never ever give up because you never know you might just surprise yourself and if you want to hear about my you know iit delhi adventures the placement saga and how i landed my dream job check out part 2 don't forget to like share and subscribe drop your questions in the comments i love reading them and i answer all comments obviously i love reading everything but you know see you in the next video take care bye